Hi, today I want to show you how to put together the milkshake from Simply Crafty SVGs. It's a milkshake box. Now, I normally do a lot of this before I assemble, but I'm using a like a chalk ink. It's not one that's sold very uh, frequently anymore. It's from Quick Quotes. A good friend of mine gave me a bunch of them, so I have them. But I've used those and uh, color box chalk inks. And just put an edge around them, get rid of the white, and kind of give it a little frame with the ink. And I also do that with chalk sometimes. So once I get all these panels inked, and this is the big ones and the small ones, um, we'll add just small ones to the glass and then assemble the glass. And the reason we're going to hold off putting the large ones on is because it's kind of a curved glass. It'll be easier. You could put it on before assembly. It's up to you. But also, if you get any glue on it, this way, if you put it after the fact, you won't get glue on it. You could do that for the bottom too, but um, it doesn't lay flat on the bottom edge. So these little pieces are for the bottom of the milkshake glass. So, and we're just going to jump ahead, and we're almost done here to go on to the next part. And there's going to be eight sides to the glass. So here are some of the pieces. I already did two of them, and this is how they fold. And you'll see how that panel centers on that bottom section. And you'll see that that fits there. So you could put it on before if you'd like. Uh, it's up to you. I think it's easier to do it after, but it's all what you're used to. Because you can glue them on flat, I think it's easier to glue these on. Just center them to that little section down there prior to assembly. I'm going to show you how it folds here. You fold the tabs and I kind of fold them in. And you can see how I'm folding those tabs to the side and then kind of curling it with my fingers to give a little of the curve, the glass curve. So we'll continue to do that on the remainder of the side pieces. Like I said, there's eight total. And folding, getting it ready for assembly, you could do it um, all at once if you want, uh, or you could just do it each piece. I just figured since I have that piece in my hand, I might as well just do it then. Sometimes it does help to score it first, um, to fold it on the scores, I should say. So you can see how to center that better if you can't really see your lines. And your lines are probably, a lot of people use dashed um, cut lines. Um, I just happen to be using a machine that lightly cuts a solid line. And that's a version that you have in the file that you provide if you do have capability to uh, score solid lines, like uh, the Cricut has capabilities. I wouldn't use it on the Explorer because they're... Uh, score is not as strong as it should be for to fold but um, I understand there's new the new maker tool a scoring wheel can score pretty deeply and I use uh, I, I'm looking into doing the getting the uh, maker but uh, for now I am able to cut a solid line very lightly so it's easy to fold as my score line and I use that on Silhouette um, and uh, Eclipse. If I cut on Cricut right now, if I were using the Explore machines, I would just cut the dashed lines. So once we get these all folded, we'll just start assembling it. And I am using an 80 pound cardstock from um, American Crafts. It's what I prefer to use to put my boxes together, most of them at least. So now we'll start uh, gluing these sides together. So what I like to do, unless you get, until you get used to it, is to 
glue that top tab first. Make sure that that top edge is aligned as well as the edge is aligned with that tab fold, of the left tab fold. So you can kind of run your finger over it. If you do have excess glue, make sure you have some place to wipe it. I have usually have a wet paper towel. But I like to do that top tab and then anchor it and then continue to glue the rest of the tabs. Now you can do two tabs at a time. Um, I'm going to do four so I can finish off the section. And you could start by gluing, adding glue to more than one tab at the top. Um, but my glue, because it's Scotch Quick Dry, dries rather quickly. And um, sometimes if I glue too many tabs at once, by the time I get to the last one I have to re-glue it. So and you can see as I'm gluing each tab, I'm making sure that that edge is aligned to the tab fold. And there's a, I had some glue on my fingertips. The trick with gluing for me is just making sure there's not too much glue, uh, a lot of quantity of glue near the, uh, like the fold line. I'm not always good at it, that's why I always have to have a towel. So now that we've done the top, we're going to do the bottom portion, and we're just going to continue down. And no matter what glue you're using, you should be able to just glue all the tabs carefully, don't put too much, and just work your way down. So if you see the picture, that's kind of the middle of the stem of the glass, and then a little bow outwards on the bottom, for the bottom portion of the milkshake glass. I said depending on your glue you may have to hold it longer but just make sure you're aligning it and you'll be fine. And you're going to continue doing this for all the sides and the only side that really gets a little bit more difficult is when you get to the last one because closing up a box like this because of the curves and the pressure you just have to be a little bit more gentle and careful as you get to the end. Mine doesn't always look perfect at the end. Um, I mean, you assume that I would be better at that, but it just takes a lot of patience. So again, I'm just anchoring that top one, and I do have a little score line there, so um, even though we do have a panel that goes over it, I toyed with breaking up the panels, but um, I ended up with a solid panel at the top part of the glass. So go ahead and you can watch, and we'll, when we get to the point where we're at the last panel, I'll have a little bit more explanation.
Okay, now that we're to the last piece, the last piece is on, we want to glue on, um, glue it all together. So I'm putting glue on all the tabs and put enough on there so it doesn't dry up while you're doing it. I'm just doing it on the top part first. And sometimes it's easier to go from the middle to a place where you can't really reach really well and match it up the middle to the top. If you can do it to the top to the bottom, you it's great. But you kind of have to gently match it up. If you do it from the top to the bottom, sometimes it starts applying pressure and it's hard to get in there with your hands, especially if uh, your hands are a little bit uh, wide or fingers like mine. But so this way, if you're having the same issue I have, if you can't do it from top to bottom, do it from the middle to the top. Now, I turned out it wasn't like perfect, but it was close to what I needed it to be. And I just adjusted it as needed. And then I used a, a wooden chopstick, just one of those takeout ones, to apply additional pressure from within so as I pressed on the tabs from the outside and then of course I had to do a little fix up there. And then that will complete the box almost until you do the bottom portion. So which is easier because it's easier to, to uh, reach in and I'm just using my fine tip applicator to um, reach in there and apply glue to those little tabs and I would go from the middle to to the basically how we were doing it for all the other panels top to bottom and if you are having difficulty one section if you have really fast drying glue like I do sometimes it's not forgiving um, but I try to get to as quickly as possible. As you can see, I'm adjusting that. And no, I'm not flipping you off. I use my middle finger a lot, unfortunately. So there it is. So now we're going to get it ready to put the bottom panel on. So you could use score tape or something like that to do it. Um, but if you're careful, you can use liquid glue. I don't Either way, it just depends. I just put it upside down. Then I add a, a good amount of glue to all the tabs on the bottom. Now you want to stay away from the the tab fold so it doesn't bleed too much on the edges. But you want enough on there so it doesn't dry before you get the panel down as well. So that's kind of moving it around, making sure that it's wet before I continue. I usually start with one side, match it up to one edge, and then just slowly go around applying pressure around on each tab. This is why sometimes score tape is, is easier because you can apply it to one tab, kind of flip it up and make sure it doesn't get stuck on any other tab, and then put it down carefully. It's just a a matter of your preference. If you've done it before, you know what you like. But I use both methods. It just depends. So once I rub around all the tabs lightly, I can flip it over and apply pressure against the table. Just kind of rub it against the, the table to make sure you're putting a little bit more additional pressure. And it should set. So I'm just adjusting that top glass top of the glass. So now we're just going to put on those uh, long panels. Put a light amount of glue or adhesive on the back. Uh, you might be using uh, something like a Xyron sticker machine or maybe you're not using liquid glue at all. Just center it on that top section. You see there's an edge all the way around. And if you wanted to, I thought about this after the fact, but um, I said this earlier. I decided on a large panel, um, but you could actually use your software to slice away that top portion if you wanted that top section of the glass. 
to be exposed. It's all about what you want it to look like. But there's so much you can do with, with all the software out there now. You don't have to make it like we put them out there. So we'll just finish putting the panels on. I'm not showing that, but I just assume all the rest are put on. And then now we're going to start at the, the top of the box. Because once you add those panels, all the rest is this done already. So this is the uh, like the whipped cream portion. So I'm going to show you how to, just showing you how to fold everything on the score lines. Folding the little tabs. And just look carefully. Like I said, you may have dashed cut lines if you have a machine that does dashed rather than solid. I didn't fold that one right. Um, that should be folded back. So the only valley fold that's going to be there is this next one right there. Not the only one, but the main one. So it folds in all the rest kind of fold uh, outwards. So the second one, you'll be able to see that better. And I do recommend doing this all at once. After you do a couple, you know where the score lines are, if, especially if you have white. It's hard to see the cut lines. And they're shaped so it'll help you put it together. And that's what it'll look like. Smaller version. So um, we're going to do the bottom shake portion too first. We want to, I just like to get all my, my folding and uh, curling and all that stuff out of the way. And then you can just glue it together. So this will be the bottom portion of the lid of the box. So whatever flavor shake you want to make or malt, whatever you prefer. I prefer malts, but people like shakes. They know the word shake. You'll see I'm kind of curling that top piece a little bit. And you'll see why. So we'll put that bottom edge together first. And similar to the bottom, the glass, we're going to glue each piece together. There's eight of them. And we want to start, start from top to bottom, gluing the tabs. Now it does get a little tricky on this particular section. As it's kind of curled right here at the top. So you want to match it up best you can and apply pressure just to that tab first to make sure it's good and secure before you go on to the next one. It may come apart at the top if you uh, move on and you'll see that a couple times it did for me and I had to re-glue it and that's where this really this fine any kind of fine tip applicator like glue applicator is great because you can reach in. And you can see how it comes together here. Just matching up that edge to the tab fold of every single tab. So it's slightly curved at the top. And the top part that will be gluing the finished um, whipped cream port top. Oh, we're going to do that second. Well, once we get that together, we'll put them together. So again, I'm just reiterating, be careful on that top tab. It's a, little, it's a little tricky and can pull apart pretty easily. So go ahead and I'll just leave you watching me assemble the rest of the panels.
So here we are, we'll just glue those edges together. And because it's such a small piece, it's not as hard to glue as maybe the, the glass portion, because you can reach in quite easily. But I thought it was easier to go from bottom to top with that little curve in the top. Those curve, anything that curves kind of pulls a little pressure on it, puts a little pressure. So kind of hard to adhere when you get to the last piece. If you do have trouble like I do, just hold it a little longer. Sometimes the key to getting these things together is patience. So after doing this, I think the hardest part was this, these last two pieces right here, these last two tabs. Just getting the pressure on them to keep them closed so they don't pull up. So I held it especially long until it was secured. So once it's all glued together, we'll move on to the whipped cream topping. So we'll put that aside. Now this is going to seem weird when you put it together, but it'll come together. So this is like everything else. The only difference is it's curved. So we're going to glue that top really small tab had to be small because of how thin it was at the top. So we want to apply a lot of pressure to that, make sure it's all good and secure before you start gluing on the rest of them. So usually what was working for me well, and you'll have to see if two or three tabs at a time work for you, but the next three, it was fairly easy. You just keep on matching up that edge to the tab folds and just carefully folding it over. And this is where folding it on the scores prior to doing this really helps. And you can see we get to the valley fold, the indentation. And that's why we went only three tabs down. And then we'll finish gluing the remaining tabs. So with all these folds, it's easy to kind of maneuver it around. It's only going to be get more difficult as you get towards the end. 
because of the curve of this particular how I twisted the design it looks kind of funny as you're putting together it may not look like it's gonna be correct when you're putting it together just be aware of that because there is kind of a little bit of something you do at the end to make it look more round it's gonna look kind of sideways for a while so just continue gluing on the panels again starting with that top tab And you know, the other thing that I, I noticed after putting a couple of these together is just getting that edge as close as possible to the tab fold so you don't have too many gaps. You're going to have little gaps where the, the tab cuts in, like a little bit here and there you'll be able to see, but you really can't see it that much if you really concentrate on getting it together. I think it wants the whole box together is what where the strength of this one this is why I like it is the twist. So I'm not gonna reiterate it anymore what it's basically the same process and I'll let you watch it until we get to the end because that's a little bit different and we will have to maneuver the box a little bit to get it that last the last edges uh, attached.
Okay, so now we just have to glue the final sides together, those final tabs to that opposite edge. So you can kind of gently, you can kind of gently fold it up. You're, you can see as you're kind of folding it in how it's going to shape. So just get it in the right position for yourself. I'm going to add glue to that top tab first and reach in, make sure that it's lining up, and then apply pressure. And you want to make sure you flip those tabs down, the next tabs in, so they don't pull. So you can do a couple tabs at a time, two to three. If two may be better if you're struggling with it, but you're just gently pushing it down underneath the side and aligning it, that fold, to that edge, to the opposite edge. And then you can kind of push in. So as you go down, you're kind of manipulating the paper to match up. I think this is one of the trickiest parts of the box, other than for me the milkshake box, even though it's so large, um, it, it was hard getting my hands in the middle of it. And this is why this box is actually so large. I like the effect of this top part, but I don't want it to get so small that it's hard to maneuver. Plus there's a lot more stuff you can put in the box for a gift. That's always a bonus. It's kind of a thin one so you could put a little thing in candy, nuts. It's just kind of fun. Plus the gift card. So there's a lot you could fit in there. I was thinking of a birthday gift when I designed this one. And just once you get to the bottom you're done with this piece. Just make sure it's good and dry before we go on to the next step. If you have to take a couple minutes, I would do so. Because now we're going to glue it to the shake portion. Whatever color you chose. I have my little chocolate shake. And those tabs from the whipped cream top is just going to glue to the inside of inside top portion of that shake section on the bottom. So I'm kind of folding them in and out just to get them pliable. First you want to fold them naturally, which would be in. And then I kind of fold them back a little bit just to get them ready because I'll have to apply pressure when I'm in there. With something like this, I like to glue one tab first, get it secure, and then glue the remaining tabs. So what we want to do is make sure it's centered on one panel edge. Make sure that top edge of the shake portion is aligned with the inner fold of the whipped cream tab. So we want to get that nice and secure. Make sure it's aligned properly because that will help with the rest of the tabs. There's two ways to do this. You could go around and do the adjacent tabs, glue them on one at a time. Sometimes it's helpful to do the opposite tab and then glue the side tabs, but um, in this case I'm going to do each one. But one good thing that I do sometimes, and I just didn't do it on this one, is just do the opposite tab. Um, the one opposite, the, the one, first one that you attached. And then you have it kind of anchored right in the middle. And then you can do the remaining tabs by adding glue to the tabs from within and just kind of folding them up and adding pressure like you're, you see here. But this works too, going around. Just make sure you do it when you're putting the glue on, and this is why the fine tip applicator works so well, um, that you're not putting too much glue towards the top of the fold, so it doesn't leak out the top. Kind of looking more like a shake now. And be careful you don't have glue on your fingers like I did. It's the theme of every single video I do. Glue on my hands. So 
So we're almost done here. All we're going to add from here is the cherry on the top. It's pretty basically that's done. That's what it looks like inside. So here's the cherry. And I'm gonna we have a there's little cut lines in it so you can fold it. So we're gonna put the panels on too. And the reason I added the panels are it's for like a dimensional look. So if you have some foam tape, um, we want to make sure you're putting the panels on the correct side, by the way. So I just double checked. Make sure I have the right side of the cherry. And then I just popped it out a little bit for dimension, but you don't have to do that. You could always make the background black too or green if you wanted a green stem or um, or just color it if you want. So I did that first. And then I'll put a little glue dot on that bottom section. But first we want to glue together the top of the stems. So the way they did this was just a little fold over cherry and just glued it at the very top. So barely any glue just to keep it together. Then I used a little mini glue dot and then attached it to the top. And it was hard. It pushed it in a little bit so I had to pop out the top. And then put my hand in there to apply pressure as I pressed it on. Liquid glue, you could try it. You're probably going to have to hold it. It's such a small little area that a uh, glue dot works better. And it's a good thing to have in your arsenal anyways. So there it is. Once we put the lid on, kind of a fun box. So you can embellish it more. I did end up adding some pearl beads to the bottom of it. And you see that's how it opens. Hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. And thank you for watching.